I, because I wanted to, I started to take conduct lessons. I, mean, I didn't know that years later I could be able to conduct something. Really? But yeah, so there are there are signs or there are there are dots that you have to put together, the staying open and, and being faithful to your interests and to yourself as an artist. I'm not saying that it was easy, but I can say that one thing will lead to another. Yeah. Adonis. Hello. Lovely to see you again. Lovely to see you too. So, how are you? I'm good. Uh, working a little bit at the university. It's usually yeah. cold in Alabama at this, this time for some kind of reason. But oh. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. It's it's really lovely to talk to you. Now you're in America. The last time I saw you in Vienna. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um, Adonis, you have to. We have to talk about this wonderful story of how you started um, playing the piano. I see. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, the way my mother played the piano for eight years. So yeah. I grew up playing the piano, but by the time I I was born, she wasn't playing. Nobody was playing, but I was I would always open it and bang on the piano. And uh, when I was five, it was decided that I was going to start taking lessons with um, a, a teacher that used to teach the, the kids in the neighborhood. And after the first lesson, that person passed away, but I was still lucky enough to apply for the conservatory that you have to start exactly at seven because it's a very strict system in Cuba that you have to start certain disciplines at certain age. Ballet at five, and piano at seven, and or, sorry, eight, and trombone at nine, they are very specific. So I was lucky enough to, to be notified, or, or my mom was notified that there were auditions for the for that school that we don't pay anything, but uh, all the kids are selected. And yeah. I I made the audition. The audition doesn't really mean that I play. It was just looking at your your bones, uh, your sensibility. If you have perfect pitch, if you could sing, and so on. So I got into that school, and I stayed in that system for sixteen years. Wow. Yes. Yeah. And uh, but uh, where was this school now? Where did you grow up? Okay. Uh, that school was in Santiago de Cuba. Oh, okay. But uh, Cuba has uh, 14 or now 15 because they have one provinces and the system is the same in all provinces. So it doesn't matter in which part of the island you are, you get the same musical education for this special school. And um, after seven years, they made a national test to see if you should continue. Okay. So I, I made that one, and then after another four years, they made another test to see if you can go to the university as a musician or as a dancer, so to speak. Yeah. Wow. And I did so I, I got my bachelor's uh, degree in Cuba, in Havana, by then. Oh, I see. But do, do you think this system where they take you from such a long, uh, such a young age and have you in a school where it's so uh, art based, uh, do you think that is a good thing? I think it's a good thing because you get a, you get a sectional training. I mean, I'm not saying that it's the only way. I have people, I know many people that have gone through a different system, but uh, in Cuba, it, it, it worked perfectly. It was copied from the Soviet system. It wasn't always like that. But um, I guess they copied that system that you have to start a certain age and go through certain curriculum. And all the classes of all were mixed uh, in Spanish or geography and math, but then you have to go to music appreciation or choir or piano twice a week and theory and this and that. So by the time you are seven, you basically know what it's, by the time you have been there for seven years, no longer seven years old, you basically know everything. And then the next four years, you start going to international competitions if you are, if you are set to continue. And the top ones go, go to the national school. I was lucky to, to be selected to go to the national school. 
So from 14 on, I was always in Havana. And then I did my bachelor's at the University of Arts in Havana. I was also very good there until I left the country. And when did it uh, start? When did you start thinking, well, this is what I'm going to be? Uh, I'm going to be a pianist. Uh, I wanted to be a doctor because it runs in the family. And uh, uh, my, many of my family members were doctors. And, yeah. and I wanted to play the guitar. And I, I just thought of music as something to have fun. Yeah. And then uh, until one day, one classmate, mentioned that he wanted to be a concert pianist, but I didn't know what that was. As a child, I didn't know. And then he explained that he, he saw himself in the theater and saw himself in a, like being announced, you know, with lights, his name and so on, and people going and entering to see him play. And I was, that picture was going through my mind and imagine it was me, the way he was describing it. And I got like a, a, a very a strong, uh, almost like painful thing in the stomach. And maybe it was like a, like a flash to the future, because that's exactly what happened. Uh, but I, even at that point, I didn't decide what I wanted. I said, this, this, it felt scary to me, and I didn't want to. But by, I would say by the seventh year, when I saw that I made it to the national school, I thought, well, maybe I'm not, I'm not bad at this, and I really like it. And, uh, and from that on, when you enter to that school, you miss out a lot of general education, that's the bad part. Because then they really focus on music and art. And uh, I don't know a lot of chemistry. I mean, they, they take things that you are not gonna be if you're gonna be a, a, an artist, so to speak. And by that time, and when I saw, I, I won a couple of um, national competitions and they sent me to the Czech, to that, back then was the Czechoslovakia, it was the Czech Republic. And they sent me abroad to play. I said, I, I think this is it. I'm not going to uh, bother to, to try to do something on the side. I don't feel prepared to do other, thing, other things. And obviously, I'm not too bad at this. So I'm going to stick with this. And um, have you ever thought back and thought, what would it have been like to be a doctor? <laughs> uh, I, I still like it. Uh, oh, okay. You still yeah. think about uh, that? Yes, I would. Uh, I probably would have been uh, under the shadow of one of my aunts, yeah. because she was the, the director of one of the hospitals, and I'm assuming that I would probably would have worked there. I don't know, but yeah, I still like Yeah, it. you still think that. <laughs> but, um, but now, this is, a, 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 you know, I've spoken to many young uh, pianists as well, you know, that just finished their studies or just getting into the world of, uh, you know, freelance world and so on. What would your advice be for a young musician now in this time uh, who, who starts their career? Yeah, yes. Well, w one thing I want to say is that uh, in Cuba, when I graduated, they, they give you a position somewhere in the country. Really? So, yeah. It could be in different provinces, it could be in a small town, but they give you something. Mine was in the same school where I graduated. So, what I'm trying to say is, uh, as a young uh, student, I never thought too much about one kind of work or so on. And, so on. And, uh, and then, right after I graduated, that I left the country, then I have to face the reality of the real world, of how, how to become a freelance and so on. And the only advice I could give to younger pianists or younger artists is to remember that there is no only one way to make it. There is something, there are some things that we see on, like in, in the media or TV or that some people won a competition and made it. There are many individual ways to make it and be involved with art and music and, and do something meaningful with it. And also, what is making? Everything is very, it depends on the person, it depends on the objectives and goals that the person has. Uh, I have a very unusual career because, yes, I'm a concert pianist, but I also compose, and I also do a little bit of conduct. And I, I'm not trying to do all just because I want to do something different. It's just that I have different interests in music and everything fulfills me. As an artist, so it's very hard to give to give up one thing. 
Uh, probably I'm stronger as a pianist, I think, because I did a study for a longer time. But all the other things, uh, more to my piano playing. Being a conductor changes how I see music in the Why do you make me think of have the composer so who wrote the particular piece? Um, so to, I, I would advise them to be open and know that there are many individual ways to find your path in art. That's all I say. How, how important do you think in this time, especially in this time, uh, for artists to to be themselves, you know, to be their own artists? It, or, or to do you think this is a as a, a easy thing to to be able to do, and then just to to be like how you were trained, or to be like everybody else? Well, this is the. It's, it's a very difficult time uh, worldwide, but it's also the perfect time to experiment. There are, there are because of the, the COVID and everything, we were in lockdown and there were no concerts. So this is the perfect time to try different repertoire, to try different things. Same to the COVID, I wrote three pieces that I I probably wouldn't have, to, wouldn't have had the time to, to write them uh, for different media, you know, for string quartet, and uh, instead of piano, for example. And uh, it's, yeah, it's the perfect time to, if you want to, I'm not the strong that, but if you want to venture into social media, some people have been creating with content, a lot of content just playing at home, and then you may, you don't know what you may discover, what path you may encounter there. So I'm not saying that it's easy, but it's the perfect time to try, because you never know for sure what you will do. Yeah. How easy was it for you to be this, uh, you know, your your own artist, your own personality? How was it for you to, as, did, did you have that already as a young age? Uh, a little bit, but also my friends and colleagues encouraged me. Some encouraged me to write. Why don't you write? You always wrote music as a kid or as a youngster, why don't you do it seriously? Then I did something and it worked. So I did, I composed another one that worked. Uh, and at some point I wrote the piano concerto and then it was premiered with the National Orchestra of, Post Orchestra of Costa Rica. So the, it, one thing led to another thanks to my colleagues that made me venture into other things other than just playing. Just, I want to be a concert player and I don't want to do anything else. And uh, I'm not saying it's easy, but it was my my main interest when I was studying uh, in in New York, in the New York area. When I was doing my doctorate. Um, I because I wanted to, I started taking conduct lessons. I didn't know that years later I could be able to conduct something. Really? But yeah, so there are there are signs or there are there are dots that you have to put together. The staying open and, and being faithful to your interests and to yourself as an artist. I'm not saying that it was easy, but I can say that one thing led to another. Yeah. And now you are teaching as well? Yes. Uh, I, I live now in Alabama. I teach at Alabama State University. Yeah. And yeah. what do you teach there? Uh, I, I, my main focus is piano performance. Yeah. I have done the longest, and it's what, that's my actual degree, my final degree. But uh, I also do things related to theory and composition. So oh, I, I teach in music theory, and I assist with other things in the school that may be needed based on my different strong points as composer or theory person. Oh, I see. Okay. Now, um. Tell me, Adonis, what is your favorite composer to play? Uh, it's hard to say. I don't have. Really? I, I, I feel deep. I love many composers. Uh, I feel different about all of them. I, I, do, I know for a fact I do have love to meet Mozart, for example. Um, and then I love Mozart when I play. I love Bach when I play. Then I love Rachmaninoff when I play. Uh, uh, it's hard to to pick one, but I, I maybe have 
a handful of favorites to play, maybe Mozart for sure, um, Prokofiev maybe, Bach, well, Bach any time of the day and any day. Yes. Mm -hmm. But what is it? I wonder, I wonder if that makes it my favorite, uh, but no, because I Mozart, I love Mozart too. Oh, really? It's really hard, yes. Yeah. yeah. But what is it about Mozart that you like so much? Uh, it puts me in a good mood, I think, because I never know for sure that I understand what he's trying to feel very connected to, to the spirit of his music. It puts mm -hmm. me immediately in a very good mood, whether it's an opera, whether it's a symphony or a quartet. It's, it's like it's a language that I, it resonates with me. There is something there. Mm -hmm. uh, and Bach is like, it's like a therapy. I mean, no matter what state of mind I am, it organizes me mentally. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, they all, they all do something different. Me. Now, when you compose, do you use influences from your favorite composers or from other composers uh, when you compose your music? Unconsciously, because I can't, my, my compositions tend to be very neoclassical. Also, maybe because I've been trained as a classical pianist, I have that thing, but that's not an excuse because other people who have been trained that way are, are more avant-garde, so to speak. But and also I have a, a tendency to write in the contrapuntal way that Bach writes. Okay. Um, with my own voice, but yeah, there, there are the subconscious influences uh, of all the pieces that I have played and all the things that I like in the music of the composers that I like, probably, mm -hmm. yeah. And what what is uh, what would inspire you, for example, to write a piece? Uh, usually, uh, for example, uh, the, the, the first couple of things that I wrote were inspired by paintings and sculptures. Really? Oh, that's yes. interesting. Mm. Yeah, because I, I never did it seriously until I was asked to write the music for a documentary that was uh, about a, an art exhibit, a big art exhibit in, 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 in Cuba. And, uh, so I thought of doing one piece based on each piece of art. Sometimes it was a sculpture, sometimes it was a painting. That sparked something. Or, for example, my piano concerto is depicts a slave that is running away. I don't know where it came from. But it was, it was something. It was, I was thinking of doing something perhaps virtuosic, and then that and it 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 had some. Cuban, Afro-Cuban rhythms, and some, somehow I got into my imagination that that's what it should depict, mm -hmm. and that if the, you know that fused me to to write this in that thing. So inspiration can come from many different things. Mm -hmm. to, be a film, to be a piece of art. Mm -hmm. Because that's also always what I wonder. You know, where do you start, or what brings the the music out of you? So when you look at the painting, what do you see that that would make uh, compose I, this specific? The, the, the feeling, the feeling the painting gave me. Sometimes uh, I just sit at the piano with probably with my eyes closed, and it, it, uh, an idea comes, then the, then comes the hard part to develop that idea, to do something okay. meaningful with that. No? It's almost never it comes through completely, but at least I get the, what I would call like the seed of the idea of in what direction it can go. Now, the way I develop the idea is totally away from the piano. Oh. Yeah, okay. I cannot be on the piano. I have to think about that idea in, in when I'm walking or when I'm sitting somewhere and then the idea of how I can transform that idea or make it grow, come to me, then I have to take notes quickly and then go to the piano and, and fix it. I know? see. I, do you, when you compose, do you write the notes or do you use a computer to compose? Uh, well, if both. I have to write them I, because I write faster with my hands, the ideas. So I have to write the course and write the structure and something that nobody will understand. 
with a, an arrow saying from here you have to go to this and, and then I see that the computer and organize it to make it in a beautiful way and also because then it organized my mind to see clean. Okay. And then, uh, mm -hmm. A plus it's easier to edit. I can say, well, this, this doesn't work, I can move it. So it's a little bit of both, but when I get the the idea, if I start typing on the computer, the notes, something dies. You have to be wow. with, you have to be on this, you have to be with the, the pencil and a piece of paper. And do you play your own compositions or do you um, have other people uh, use your work? Hardly ever I play mine. And, and I'm, yeah, I'm lucky that uh, some musicians have asked me to play. So mm -hmm. they, they play, yeah. Okay. And, and I write very little. I, I use the piano, but I don't write that much for piano alone. Oh, I see. Okay. So I always need uh, other people to play. Anyway, but I'm glad that everything has been played. They are my friends or colleagues or or people that know have asked me and they have played. And when they play, do do is it difficult for you when they don't interpret what you've meant to be as as how it how they play it? Uh, sometimes it, it goes both ways. Sometimes I have to make comments. No, that's not my that's not what I had in mind, and I think it should go faster, and this is what I was thinking. But some other times it, it gets a different turn, and it's very interesting. Oh, I, I'm surprised that you see it that way, and I like it. So I'm, I'm not strict. There, there, are, there are always two sides to it. The way I see it, and what the artist, if he's a good artist, can bring to the piece. Mm. Yeah. Now, that's always very interesting for me, because I wonder sometimes if the... the um, you know, the old composers like Beethoven and, and uh, Bach and so, if they um, played their music the same every time, you know, if they, the, the music as they composed it, if it was really played the same every time, I, they intended. it. Um, most of, I don't know later on, but, but up to, up to least, I would was, I was think all the composers that we, think of were great improvisers. Um, Bach was a great, super great improviser. He would play a prelude, which is a practice that still exists in many churches that the organist just sits and improvises a bit. But he was a secondary impro at improvising, improvising big forms, like fuse and everything. And um, the music of the Baroque is full of ornamentation, so you are supposed to change the melody in order to do some ornamentation. Same thing with the things in the classical period. Mozart and Beethoven were exceptional improvisers. So I'm sure, especially the slow movements that were more melodious, he would add things all the time. And um, being in Vienna and seeing the palaces where they play with that very live acoustic because of the, all the stones and everything. And sure they will have to adjust the time depending on the hole and that will spark something different. Uh, there has to be a, a right balance between being faithful to the composer but not so strict that you cannot bring anything of your own. Mm. Yeah. And then I think the, the, the extreme example maybe is Chopin that wrote pieces and then it was published in different countries, and they are completely different. It's the same piece. Mm. It's not number nine or almost nine number two, but the ornamentation is completely different. The beginning, the, the voice may be a little different here and there. So that gives you an idea that the the creative process was always active, and it's hard to say when it's completely finished that you cannot change an you know, old completely. Mm. But of course, I'm not opening um, Pandora's book saying like, well, you shouldn't respect the composer, you can, you can change it. Mm. There is a little bit of yeah. different thing. Mm. Mm -hmm. But now, Adonis, tell me, what is your wish for the future? My wish for the future for me or for everything? So the first thing is to, to the COVID to be over so we can all go yeah. back to our concert yeah. halls and, 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 and have a sense of a normal artistic life and normal life in general. Uh, we are all tired of uh, uh, there is a new version, a new you know Omicron or a new something. Uh, mm -hmm. That's the that would be the general thing. And uh, and for me, well, to be able to retake 
my my performing and performing in both ways, performing conducting and performing playing the piano and, and being able to travel freely without the mask and where and, yeah. and the thing that I could do before the before the pandemic started. Mm-hmm. And of course, I hope you come to Vienna as well again to come and play. I, I, I think I'll be I think I'll be there this summer. Really? Oh, that's yeah. wonderful. Yeah, then yeah. we must meet for coffee again. I hope so. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, but um, do you uh, do you have to wear masks now there in in America when you when you do a performance? Yes. Oh, you do. Okay. And how? Well, is there, there, there are people that that choose. Well, if you play, for example, if you play a, a trumpet or something, you can't. But every everybody else will probably be wearing a mask. And for you, how is it to play piano with a mask? Uh, this depends on the piece. Okay. Depends on the piece because uh, for me it's not that uncomfortable except that if the piece is very what I call aerobic, yeah, like too fast and too active, then yeah. I start sweating and because I wear glasses, it gets foggy and it gets even foggier because of the mask. Yeah, it's not anything that the mask bothers me. The breathing, you know, mm-hmm. I could play perfect mask, but the, the mask and the glass is a terrible combination. The, the mass and the, the glass. Mm. Yeah. Um, and is now the last thing that I want to ask you is, uh, do you have a favorite place where you go to uh, a restaurant or a coffee shop or uh, there in your area that you want Up to? Here. Uh, yeah. Uh, not really. I have, a, perfect, I have, I have, I have a, a favorite place, but it's not, uh, it's, it's, a, it's the museum of, Modern art here that has a huge lake. Yeah. And uh, I like buying my tea or whatever and then go there to read. That's my favorite place. Really? But the coffee shop, yeah, it's, yeah. it's very peaceful and it has uh, dogs and sometimes swans. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, wonderful. Yes, yeah, beautiful. And they, they, they have concerts inside also, they have a concert hall inside. Okay. Um, but a, 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 a particular place like to go and have coffee or thing, I haven't really thought of, of it. In, and here in, in Vienna, place. where do you go when you are in here in Vienna? Uh, well, I, I I tend to live usually next to the National. Oh yeah. And, uh, I like all the I like all the, the coffee shops in the like in the main district next to the around the Stefan's Dome and all of that. I love oh, yeah. just sitting outside anywhere. Yeah. Any, any, any of those will do. And I don't know if I told you, it's my favorite city. Oh, really? Yeah. I, <laughs> it is. It is. I must say, I feel very fortunate that I can live here. That's wonderful, yeah. Yeah. There's something about, the, not only that it's beautiful, but there's something about the, the atmosphere and the feeling of the city. That is very appealing to me and apparently to many to many people. Yeah. I think so. I think there is something in the in the city, you know, there's some sort of energy in the city that's exactly. like, that attracts um, uh, artists, you know, musicians and and uh, all artists would love to come here. So that's um, yeah, that's wonderful. But Adanas, I wish you a wonderful afternoon. What time is it where you are now? Uh, it is 2.31 p.m. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So you still have a lovely afternoon in front of you. And you have a wonderful evening. I evening, a yeah, so yeah. Yes. yeah. It's now, yeah, it's, um, it's half past nine. Half past nine here, yeah. But um, let me know when you're here again and then we'll meet up. That would be so oh, wonderful yeah. to see you again. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank okay. you so much for the interview. Okay. Thank you so much, Adonis. Speak to you soon. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.